everyone, welcome to Man Manga Boy's first ever tier list of manga I read in the month of September. I've never done this before, so this is going to be a first start. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys like this kind of thing. Definitely let me know down below. Uh, again, if you're a big fan of my material and you're not subscribed, definitely do so. Um, and also, I've got a right to fulfilling link. Please use it down below. So like, comment, subscribe, and let's begin. Uh, so first off the list, we have Big O here. Uh, Big O, you might remember, I did enjoy it quite a lot when I was reading it, but again, it does not cover the materials from season two. And in fact, it has a you know a lot of mysteries that aren't solved. I'm gonna put it in B. I did really like it uh, of this month of reading, but I wouldn't say it was the best, kind of that middle ground. I mean, I know S is the top letter and B is the middle letter. So usually it would be a C, but whatever. Uh, Kimono Jihen, I like this a lot, but again, not a lot of material has happened so far. Cromarty, I think it's got some of the best humor. The only downside of Cromarty is it's all dialogue, so it's a lot to read. So that can be a little bit of a drag sometimes, but I do really enjoy it. The comedy is gold. Definitely check it out if you have never read it. Um, I think that there are a few scans of it uh, that you can officially buy uh, for like Nook and things like that. Not 100% on that though. Here we have Mao. Mao has gotten a little better, but it, it hasn't been super great. So I'm kind of between a B and a C. I'm going to put it in at C behind Kimono Jihen. No, I want to kind of put it above Kimono Jihen actually, because I do like a little bit more, at least in the direction it's going in now. It's been kind of slow lately, but I have been enjoying it. Orion, I'm going to do something really avant-garde and put it in B right behind Big O. I like Orion. I like where it's going. There's a lot of action. It is a ton of fun. There are definitely some slower moments though, but we're about to enter a huge war and I can't wait to see what happens. Haiku has been really enthralling lately now that we're into the spring tournament and we went through all the training arcs this month. Uh, we're even starting day two, so very enjoyable. I'm actually gonna put it ahead of Cromarty. Uh, Bo Fari, I really feel like this is a good kind of slice of life isekai, but not really isekai. It's like a VMO RPG that they can log into whenever they want. Having a blast reading it, it's very good. Sakamoto Days, another series that I think is pretty good. It actually straddles the line a little bit better with Cromarty of action, comedy, and the pacing. So I do like it a bit more. Prison School, I got to the ending, and I gotta say it's an S-class manga. Definitely one worth reading if you guys haven't checked it out and are feeling comfortable to do so because it does have a lot of nudity and vulgar language. Uh, I did actually find the ending to be pretty funny because, like, of course, you know, just of course that happens to uh, Kyo, what's his name, Kiyoshi, yeah, Kiyoshi. I do wish we found out more about what happened to his friends and his boys, but whatever, you know, it still is a pretty good ending, and I think what happened to Chiyo was pretty funny too. Uh, JJK, another uh, manga I've been really enjoying lately, ever since we got to the um, Shibuya incident, I believe it was called. Things have been really slaying. I've, I've really enjoyed it. Classroom of the Elite is gonna be a D tier for me. The manga hasn't really gripped me yet. It just seems like a slice of life with this like edgy twist that it hasn't gripped quite yet with me, but it seems like okay. I've read two volumes so far of the manga. People say the manga is not as good. Probably right. Uh, man and this cat. I have a soft spot for a man and this cat. I'll say it's probably around the same ballpark as Bofuri. If you have a cat and you haven't read this manga, I definitely recommend checking it out. If you like cats but are allergic, I would definitely recommend checking out this manga too. Infinite Denigram, another manga I like a lot of, probably a little bit more than Big O. Uh, it's another VMORPG. I find it very interesting. It's possibly not so virtual though. It's possibly very real. And actually a similar thing can be said with Shangri-La Frontier. I've got a little bit less, um, you know, behind it right now. So I don't know exactly what's going on, but it does show a lot of promise. I'm very excited to keep reading it. These two series are actually quite similar. I would say Infinite Denigram is a little bit more anime-esque and this is, uh, I'd say this is a little more shonen-esque. How about that? And this is a little bit more seinen or seinen. If you guys like seinens, I would definitely check out Shangri-La Frontier for sure. Uh, especially if you like the SAO. Alice in Borderland. I've been actually really enjoying this series. It's been taking up quite a bit. I'm gonna put it right behind Cromarty. And I actually watched a live action um, show with my wife and it was pretty fun. It was a little bit different from where I've read so far in the manga anyways, but I'm still really enjoying it. Fire Force, I'm gonna put that plainly in front of Haiku. Fire Force has been really good and I've been loving it. Uh, it you know, ever since the late teens slash early 20s, you know, that volume era area there, um, you know, I've really enjoyed where Fire Force has been going and 
I hope it just keeps going that way, like it has been. It's been really like reminds me of the end of Soul Eater where it gets like really madness and like things are so twisted and, and not really recognizable with what it was before. Secret Reverse by the same author as Yu-Gi-Oh! Not very good in my opinion. They throw Marvel characters in there and it's like it wasn't good. <laughs> Bottom line, I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend reading it. I would only recommend buying it because you are interested because of the creator. But honestly you could probably read it at a Barnes Noble and say that's not worth a buy. <laughs> um, but yeah. Ghost Reaper Girl. <clears throat> this series I also like quite a bit. I'm getting interested to figure out what's happening in it. I like it more than Mal probably right now, uh, but they are pretty close together. I'm between a C and a low B with this series. I'm going to go with a uh, high C because it is, you know, just starting off. It's just starting to get, you know, going and rolling. We've just been introduced to the world and kind of how these systems work. We don't even 100% know how they're working, uh, but I we get a new form for our main character, the Ghost Reaper girl, as they're calling her, and it seems pretty cool that she has different spirits and different abilities. Kind of like how Shaman King started off with Yo merging with spirits, and then he has these new skills, but she gets a different form, so pretty cool. Spy family. We get assassin family actually in this one, and I actually enjoyed it quite a bit. Probably around the same amount of Sakamoto and Kramati days. Um, I'll just put it like like right there. It's really in these three. You know, I definitely think Sakamoto is better than Kromarty right now. Anyways, um, the jokes aren't quite as good, but it is definitely way. It's like a read, you know. Um, and Spy Family is like another one of those series where. I like it a lot, but like the plot is not existent. You know, the main plot that we've been following between the East and the West with Lloyd Forger and everything like that. So that is kind of a pain, but I do like it still quite a bit because the characters are really just carrying the story right now and they're doing a great job of it. Blue Lock, I didn't really like this volume as much as I did the first one, truthfully. I'd probably rate it blue, blue, <laughs> below Ghost Reaper Girl. It was not great in my opinion, but it was, it was still okay. Um, you know, I definitely, I would have put like the first volume in like A or B rank, but like this one, I it just, I wasn't feeling it. I don't know why. Maybe I was just not in the mood for it, or maybe it just didn't hit as good. Uh, Space Battleship Yamato. I really like this. The beginning half of the series though wasn't super good. In my opinion, it just, they kind of drop you off in the middle of nowhere. And then um, the second half or second two thirds of the story really, in my opinion, take off. I enjoyed it a lot. Look back, I get a lot of um, people saying that this is really great. I really just couldn't connect well with it. Maybe because I, I didn't really like the main character that much. She seemed like kind of petty, like, oh no, this poor sick kid who can never go to school. Uh, is better at art than me. So I'm going to drop my whole life and become good at art, meet them, we'll become a team, and then I still want to beat them, and so we'll split up. But I was like, and then if I look back, what if I never met her? And then, like, I'm like, what? And then it goes back to the forward, and then, you know, everything is back to where it was, and it's like, what? And I, I don't know. I don't know. It's just like I told Sendo, you know, I always look forward, I never look back, you know, so I can't relate. <laughs> Obviously joking. Um, elusive Samurai. Uh, volume two this series ends pretty well with a good cliffhanger i do enjoy this it's by the same creator of assassination classroom and i probably would rank it above orient for sure uh, i like the samurai aesthetic to it i like how our characters are kind of uh you know under outmatched you know they have no chance of winning but they are able to like get through it because they have the smarts and they kind of know a little bit of the future because of this character right here so that's been a blast to kind of read through. Uh, Tokyo Revengers, I read four volumes of this this week. Tokyo Revengers has been pretty good to me, I have to say. I like it probably not more than Fire Force, but more than Haiku right now. People say it starts to get mid, but so far I'm not seeing it. MHA Vigilantes, we're getting towards the end, and I really, I look forward. To, Vigilantes and Fire Force are two, I mean, Fire Force I kind of want to put an A because it, it is really good. Or an S because it is really good. I think I want to slide it to S. You just gotta do it. You just gotta do it. You know, which had Atelier. Okay, wait, wait, I should probably talk to you guys more about my hero. So we're getting to the end. I don't want to spoil too much about it, but Kyoshi, or what's his name again? Uh, the Crawler, sorry. The Crawler is really going like ham right now against the main villain. I think his name's number five. And also, um, you know, we get a lot of pro heroes making cameos right now, which is very exciting. 
really enjoy it. It's a great time to pick up this series since we are getting so close to the end. I think there's like two or three more volumes left, so we are right there. Uh, Witch Hat Atelier, or Atelier, depending on how you want to call it. Uh, I was actually really impressed with this volume. I would put this one in A, actually even above the Denogram, and Shangri-La Frontier, despite how much I rave about these two. Uh, it, with Chet, Atelier, um, you know, has started like a civil war between the wizards, pretty pronounced, and we get the brim caps and the non brim caps kind of pointed out together, or maybe they're called pointed caps, I can't remember, round caps, pointed hats, maybe that was it. Um, anyways, we get a big war kind of declared in the middle of a huge festival, which was very exciting. Um, I can't read this title. Uh, but something about being reborn in another world as a returner or something like that. Oh, actually, I think I am missing that one where it's like returner and his magic. Let's just count these two as the same. I thought that <laughs> they actually weren't both super great. I would probably put them here, like right after look back. Um, you know, they both weren't super good in my opinion but they haven't really also hit their strides. They only just started off with the series, so they could take off, but I've just read so many better manga than them both. Or Returners, Magic should be something special, and um, like I've got the cheat skill or something like that. Maybe it's not cheat skill, but uh, he finds his grandpa's closet, goes to Narnia, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's it's been okay so far. It needs to stretch its legs a little bit. We'll see what makes them unique from each other. Uh, Worlds and Sorte, another one where I feel like it kind of needs to stretch its legs a little bit. We got introduced to the world. It is an interesting world. I'd probably put it like here, but it is, um, you know, something that I can tell is going to explode as it keeps going because the author is one that kind of is known for these slower starts and then twists and turns start happening and you're not quite exactly sure what you're even reading anymore, which is really fun. <laughs> it like twists itself up. Uh, Grand Blue Dreaming, another hilarious series. I would probably place it right around here. Uh, very strong comedic vibes with this series. If you don't like comedy and, you know, just boys being really dumb, <laughs> probably not for you. I'm a big fan of those things and drinking and partying and swimming and going to the beach and like playing pranks. I think it's pretty funny. So I've been really enjoying it. It's one of those like, um, <laughs> it's like when when a boy is like somewhere between a teenager and adult, like it's that kind of that kind of comedy. I guess college humor, right? Ha 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 ha. That's a show or a thing. Die dark. Die dark. Um, no, sorry. Adventures of Die Dragon Quest. I'm a huge Dragon Quest simp. I've been a huge Die simp. I'm gonna put this actually right here. Uh, Adventures of Die is a very classic shonen series right now, and I've been definitely enjoying it a lot. I really feel like um, <laughs> I'm kind of playing through a Dragon Quest story sometimes when I'm reading through it because it does have that kind of vibe to it. Maybe it's just me imprinting one on it, but it feels that way too. It invokes a lot of like Dragon Quest tropes in my brain cells. It also reminds me of like Dragon Ball, uh, you know, like not Z or anything like that, but Dragon Ball. It, you know, we follow a younger kid and he's like wreck and train on these guys and there's something special about him, but we don't know quite yet what. He's definitely a hero somehow, but he's got this repressed thing, so kind of reminds me of Goku uh, and his monkey powers when he was younger. <laughs> um, Die Dark. Uh, Die Dark is kind of confusing, but I still do like it quite a lot. I do look forward to reading it every time I get it. Maybe I don't read it right away, but I do read it pretty quickly. I'd probably put it here in B rank. Wan Dance. Uh, this series, you know, I like it a lot. Uh, maybe not the characters though. I think it's the characters that is like kind of holding me back on this series. I really like the art to it. I really like the flow to it. I really like the way that the, the dialogue is kind of little over. The, the text boxes are never like bam, bam, bam. You know, like plain, they're like, you know, they flow like really well. So reading through it is really easy, but the characters I just am kind of like iffy on, I guess is what I want to say. Ragna Crimson, a series that nobody reads and everybody should, so that's why it's an S tier, S -tier series right there. Just kidding. Um, I do actually really like Ragna Crimson a lot. We're getting into a huge war, uh, another war one, right? Right over here. Uh, I should put it in the war, <laughs> call this war territory. Uh, but, you know, I do like Ragna Crimson a lot. It's being slept on a lot. It is very graphic and, um, you know, very senin, sanin or whatever. 
I would probably put it around the same area as Alice in Borderland, uh, just above Dragon Quest Die. Very interesting stuff is happening, and I'm excited to see what ends up happening with it. But that is my ranking for September. This is the definitive September reading log. If you didn't read these, especially up here in these S and A's, maybe consider picking up these series and giving them a chance or, um, you know, let me know what you thought and why my list is wrong. I like to hear that too. That sounds fun. It sounds fun to school people with facts and not personal info, straight objective facts. That's what's going to no subjective. Just kidding. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this kind of format, I'll probably do it every month from now on um, because it was not that hard in my opinion, a little bit hard to keep track of what I read, um, you know, outside of my app, but I think that this was fun. So I'll do it again. It helps keep my, my mind kind of straight a little bit too. So we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.